up until now, it's been expecting from the artist just to produce and not normally get rewarded for it. I think there's definitely a shift uh, when it comes down to that. I think in 10 years' time, we'll have a trillion dollars invested in art-related content. So anybody who understands the importance of the shift will probably be able to benefit. Um, so, uh, you know, there are uh, different ways, I think, in order to survive and succeed today, you've got to be uh, trying to move across the mediums. I don't think it's just enough to be a prolific painter, a prolific photographer, a prolific filmmaker. I think you've got to challenge yourself outside of your comfort zone. You've got to embrace these challenges and go through yourself. And it's not as similar, I often say, to being successful in, the, in, in, in banking or in law. You know, not everybody gets offered a, a, a partnership a position in, in a law firm or in a top position in a bank. You know, those that work incredibly hard and do a lot more end up sort of winning all sorts of awards. And I think, you know, what I'd like to perhaps uh, end with is that, uh, you know, ambition is necessary in any form of success. Uh, but you ought to be realistic and one ought to be looking at uh, constantly upgrading and improving the skill set that uh, he or she possesses. Uh, so that really goes outside of the, of the artist studio space, that really goes on a sort of uh, self-promotion done in, in, in a sort of right way, surrounding yourself with the right people, finding the galleries that fit your style rather than any galleries that, that you kind of work with. So it's, uh, it's exciting, although challenging, but I think uh, we are to see in the next 10 years a totally different way of art dealing and art appreciations. And the Arts Council will claim that, you know, art is new football and, you know, the masses nowadays go to museums and art galleries rather than football stadiums, which I think it's just a false statistics. I don't think we've educated um, the masses, so to speak, enough to be claiming that. I'd like to think that in 20 years' time, people that own one or two cars will also be owning one or two pieces of original art. Uh, there's no reason why not, because ultimately, you know, that's a lifestyle investment rather than anything else. So you can. We've all lived in empty spaces and the space is populated with art on our wall. No matter how good or bad the art is, it gives up that sort of uh, feeling of, of comfort and, and sort of sends you to sleep probably more peacefully than the bare walls. But uh, I, 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 think, I think from the point of view of uh, why art should be you know, thrown out there, you know, we're seeing a lot more footballers being photographed with uh, pieces of art in galleries. So I think there is, there is a movement to make it more popular and take it outside of the elitist circles, which I think is incredibly necessary if we are to see the, the survival rate of artists in a lot bigger numbers than what we have at the moment. Unfortunately, the statistics are staggering with about 97% of artists coming out of the educational institutions giving up within so sort of three to five years of going through the hassle of you know having to, 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 to listen to their tutors and what to do, what not to do, and then they give up because there's no support and infrastructure in the professional arena. I'd like to think that that is slowly changing, but I think we're still far away from the ideal situation. But I think we all to blame and we all to be responsible for the shift and the change in the arts world. I think we can all do much better and much more if we sort of um, join forces and find ways in which we can uh, you know, achieve bigger and better things.